level zero. Before the chaos, before the light bending, and the spaghettification, there's level zero, the safest level of all. This is the black hole encounter you don't have. Out here, you're light years away, living your life, while black holes lurk quietly in the cosmos. They exist, yes, but they can't touch you. It's almost comforting in a strange way. Black holes are like the ultimate monsters under the bed. You know they're out there swallowing stars and twisting space-time into knots, but at this distance, they're harmless shadows, too far away to matter. You can watch the universe's scariest predator from the safety of your cosmic living room. Astronomers figured this out long before we ever saw a black hole. They couldn't point a telescope at one. They're invisible by definition. But they noticed stars moving in bizarre orbits, circling around. Nothing. That nothing was the giveaway. Something massive, something hidden, was shaping their paths. That's when the idea of black holes jumped from wild theory to scientific fact. Fast forward to 2019 when the Event Horizon Telescope gave us the first ever image of a black hole. That glowing ring wasn't the black hole itself, but the light trapped at its edge. For the first time, humanity stared at the silhouette of the very thing Einstein once doubted we'd ever prove. And we were still safe, just spectators, marveling at the void from across the galaxy. At level zero, the danger is psychological. You know they're real, and that knowledge plants a seed of unease, because distance is the only reason you're safe. Close that gap, even slightly, and safety disappears. Level zero is calm, but calm never lasts forever. The moment you start moving closer, the real encounter begins. Level one. All right, so you're still safe. You haven't drifted anywhere near a black hole, but now you know they're out there. The question is, how? If black holes are invisible, how can we possibly detect them? The answer is sneaky. You look for their fingerprints, not the black holes themselves. Imagine watching a ghost move through a crowded room. You can't see the ghost, but you notice the curtains shifting, the glass rattling, the people reacting. That's how astronomers first caught on. Take Cygnus X1, discovered in the 1960s. Scientists noticed a star orbiting nothing. It wasn't circling empty space. It was being tugged by a massive, invisible partner. That partner turned out to be one of the first confirmed black holes. And it wasn't just hiding, it was feeding, emitting intense x-rays as it devoured matter from its companion star. That discovery shocked the scientific world and put black holes firmly on the cosmic map. Another telltale sign is gravitational lensing. When light from a distant star or galaxy passes near a black hole, it bends, warping into arcs or rings. The first time astronomers captured this effect, it was like nature revealing its own magic trick, an invisible monster bending reality itself. So at level one, you're not in danger yet. You're just an observer, peering at these strange cosmic footprints. But there's a thrill here too. Because every flicker of light, every warped star field, is proof that black holes aren't just theory. They're real. They're out there. And while you're safe watching from a distance, curiosity always tempts us closer. Which brings us to the next level, where the glow of the black hole's feeding frenzy becomes impossible to ignore. Level 2? Now things start to get dangerous. You've gone from a safe distance to the edge of the accretion zone, where a black hole feeds. And trust me, you don't want to hang around here. Picture a black hole as the universe's messiest eater. Anything unlucky enough to get too close, dust, entire stars, gets shredded apart and whipped into a disk that spins at nearly the speed of light. This swirling chaos heats up to millions of degrees, blasting out X-rays and gamma rays so powerful they'd sterilize anything within range. If Earth were placed here, it wouldn't just get sunburned, it would be wiped clean every trace of life erased in an instant. But the accretion disk isn't just deadly, it's dramatic. Magnetic fields twist through it like tangled wires, snapping and reconnecting, hurling jets of plasma thousands of light years long. Some black holes launch streams of energy so bright we can see them from across the universe. Imagine trying to eat spaghetti and somehow firing noodles across the entire city. That's the kind of cosmic mess we're talking about. Astronomers have actually witnessed the carnage. In 2015, a star wandered too close to a supermassive black hole. Within months, telescopes picked up a tidal disruption flare, essentially the death scream of that star as it was torn apart and fed into the disk. For scientists, it was a gold mine of data. For the star, not so much. At this level, you're still outside the black hole itself. But survival isn't guaranteed. The heat, the radiation, the chaos, it's a warning. Get any closer, and there's no such thing as safe distance anymore. And yet, curiosity always pushes forward. The real nightmare begins when you inch even closer. Level 3. You've now drifted beyond the glow of the accretion disk into a zone where entire worlds can be torn apart. This is the realm of tidal disruption events, nature's most brutal reminder that black holes aren't just mysterious, they're merciless. Here's how it works. 
Gravity pulls harder on the side of an object that's closer to the black hole than the side that's farther away. On Earth, we call that tidal force. It's why we have ocean tides from the moon's pull. But near a black hole, the difference is so extreme, it doesn't just shift oceans. It rips entire stars to pieces. Astronomers have watched this happen. In 2019, a star wandered too close to a supermassive black hole about 375 million light years away. Within weeks, telescopes captured its final moments. The star stretched, shredded, and then unraveled into glowing threads of plasma, its light flickering like a cosmic death scream before being swallowed whole. And if a planet, or worse, a spacecraft, were caught in this zone, the same fate would follow. First, structures twist and crack. Then, the world is pulled into a long ribbon of matter, stretched beyond recognition, before being funneled into the black hole's insatiable grip. It's violent, it's inevitable, and it's terrifyingly fast. There's no subtle humor here anymore. You're not just observing from a distance. You're watching destruction in real time, knowing that if you trade places with that star, you'd share its fate. But as devastating as tidal disruption is, it's still happening outside the black hole. Cross just a little further, and you arrive at the boundary where the rules of time, space, and reality itself start to break apart. Level 4. You've made it to the event horizon's edge. The most famous and infamous boundary in the universe. From here on, the rules don't just bend. They warp beyond recognition. To you, crossing this region might feel strangely ordinary. You'd keep falling, pulled deeper and deeper by gravity's grip. But to an outside observer, the story looks completely different. From their perspective, you appear to slow down and then freeze. Your image would stretch, fade, and redden as though time itself decided to put you on pause. That's because the immense gravity distorts light so dramatically that your final moments would look like a ghostly afterimage, lingering at the edge forever. And the strangest part? That light bending isn't just a theory, it's been seen. In 2019, the Event Horizon Telescope revealed the very first image of a black hole. That glowing orange ring wasn't the black hole itself, but light trapped and warped at the horizon's border, circling one last time before being devoured. For you, though, this is no photograph, it's reality. You're staring at a boundary where escape becomes impossible. Not even the fastest thing in existence. Light can claw its way back out. On this line, the universe itself decides inside there are no more witnesses. The edge of the event horizon is like the final breath before drowning, the pause before a storm breaks. It's terrifying not because of what you see, but because of what you can't. You're looking at the point where knowledge ends and mystery begins. Step closer and you don't just approach danger, you vanish into it. Level 5. This is the moment of truth. You've crossed the event horizon and from here on there is no turning back. The escape velocity, the speed you'd need to break free, is now greater than the speed of light itself. And since nothing in the universe can outrun light, your fate is sealed. What's unsettling is how ordinary it feels. There's no fiery wall, no sudden crash. You simply continue falling. The difference is that now every possible path forward leads deeper inside. Even light, which normally zips freely through space, is trapped, dragged inward with you. To someone watching from a safe distance, though, you've already disappeared. The moment you crossed the horizon, your signal was cut off. From their perspective, you froze in place long ago, fading into red nothingness. To them, you don't exist anymore. To you, the journey has only just begun. This is the point where some of the biggest mysteries in physics collide. Stephen Hawking once suggested that black holes aren't completely silent, that they slowly evaporate over time through Hawking radiation. If that's true, then everything that falls in might eventually leak back out as faint radiation. But if not, then the black hole swallows not just matter, but the very information that defines it, a direct violation of the laws of quantum mechanics. This is the infamous information paradox, and scientists still don't agree on the answer. Inside the horizon, you're no longer just an observer of the universe. You've left it behind. You're traveling into a region no human eye has ever seen, where physics itself begins to twist into something unrecognizable. And as you fall further, the forces around you start to intensify in ways that turn fatal. Level 6. Now the black hole shows its true cruelty. You've passed the horizon, and the deeper you fall, the stronger gravity's pull becomes. But here's the sinister part. Gravity doesn't pull on you evenly. The side of your body closer to the black hole is yanked harder than the side farther away. The result is a process scientists that have nicknamed, almost jokingly, spaghettification. The name sounds silly, like something out of a cartoon, but the reality is anything but funny. Imagine being stretched so violently that your body elongates into a thin strand. Atoms lined up like pearls on a string. First your legs go, then your torso, then your head, pulled apart. Not in chunks, but in an endless unraveling. 
This isn't just speculation. The same tidal forces that tear stars to ribbons apply here too. Astronomers have observed entire suns being shredded, their matter drawn into long filaments before spiraling into the accretion disk. If colossal stars can't withstand the pull, a human, or even a planet, never stood a chance. And here's the kicker. While your body is being dismantled atom by atom, your mind wouldn't even have time to fully register the horror. The process would be so fast, so absolute, that consciousness itself would be torn away along with everything else. At this level, the black hole isn't just bending light or hiding secrets. It's actively destroying matter in the most violent way imaginable. It's the ultimate display of raw power, the point where survival is no longer a question, but an impossibility. Yet even this isn't the end, because past the spaghettification zone lies something even more terrifying, the singularity itself. Level 7. You've reached the core. Past the horizon, past the tidal forces, past the point where matter can even exist as matter. This is the singularity, the heart of the black hole, and the place where everything we know about reality stops making sense. Here, the density is infinite. Space and time collapse into a point with no volume, yet unimaginable mass. Our equations can't describe it. Einstein's general relativity predicts its existence, but when the math hits infinity, the answers fall apart. This isn't just the end of your journey, it's the end of physics as we know it. What actually happens inside a singularity? No one knows. Some theories suggest it's a dead end, a cosmic graveyard where all information is lost forever. Others argue the information isn't destroyed, but somehow encoded on the event horizon like a hologram, waiting to be released through Hawking radiation. And then there are the boldest speculations, that the singularity could be a bridge, a wormhole to another universe, or even the seed of a brand new cosmos. But for you, as a traveler, those possibilities are meaningless. Here, you don't just die, you stop existing in any recognizable way. You're compressed into nothingness, every atom dismantled, every law of nature stripped away. The singularity isn't terrifying because of what we know. It's terrifying because of what we don't. It represents the ultimate boundary of human knowledge, a place where science itself collapses under the weight of the unknown. This is the final level. The black hole doesn't just consume matter, it consumes certainty. And beyond the singularity, all that remains is mystery.